Hi all, freeze cracked here. I had been, I've been doing some deep notching lately. Made several hand ice points and other notching notching activities and posting them online and I started getting questioned again about notching and I know I did a notching video way back down there somewhere in my in my video um, library thing but I um, Decided to do some more. That was all messed up because I haven't been doing punching lately and I didn't practice doing punching again before I started making this video. And I know I share too much of how off the wall and unprepared I am, but oh well. It's not like I'm worried about getting fired from this. Um, so I wasn't hanging it off my support far enough. I don't really like hanging it off the support very far because the support is kind of what keeps it from vibrating and stuff. But on the other hand, you got to have clearance for the flake to go. Because the way that I'm tilting on this, I'm thinning ahead of myself. So it's it's going inward, you know, when I hit it. And by the way, do me a favor. Practice your notching on flakes, not on points. There's no reason to break points. Practicing notching. There just isn't. You, uh... You know, pretty much everybody has a limit in what they can get away with notching, what they can notch. And for some people, the limit is a lot greater than others because of their experience level and their techniques, but everybody's got a limit. I have seen somebody notch an extremely thick point, but they had all kinds of trouble and constantly worried about breaking it. I'm notching in the thickness, by the way, here. And right there is probably seven millimeters or more thick on this flake. And I got this flake on purpose because I wanted it to be sort of a respectable ana analogy. And what I've done right now is I've got the platform just about at the midpoint, which is real dangerous and probably won't work. Um, and so often I still see in people's regular work online, and then, of course I don't really see people's notching when they're notching, but I'm gonna try and go down with this, but it probably ain't gonna work. Yeah, it did. Um, I see the that real basic issue of, wait a minute, how high is your platform? Where is your platform? Down real low takes too thin a flake. 
up at the center line breaks the piece or takes a very steep, very short beveling flake. And then kind of in the middle, that's good. So anyway. That blew that flake all to pieces. I'm going to talk about what I'm doing in a minute. But the technical aspects of it are complicated enough that I'll probably ruin it if I try and talk and punch at the same time. But I'm into such thickness, I'm probably going to ruin it anyway at some point. And what usually happens when you get into way too much thickness is you have trouble getting the thing turned enough. And, and the notch is getting narrower too. And I really need to widen the notch out. That's one of the reasons you see andice is getting wider a lot of times as I go outward, as I go inward. Um, but what you have trouble, when you get, the more thickness you get into, you have trouble getting the platform raised high enough to where it's way up near the other face, where when you flip it, it'll be low enough. And so it starts getting to where you get it kind of close to the center line. Where's my, oh. You get it kind of close to the center line. And that's definitely danger zone. Once every notch is kind of leaving you, uh, once you're taking almost every notch near the center line, that blew that down to there, by the way, um, the game is pretty much close to lost because you just can't get away with that reliably. You can get away with it some. The other thing that's really a problem with notching is that it's working great until it fails. And it fails instantly with no foreshadowing, if you will, if you don't know what you're looking at. Down in your notch when you get ready to, to hit it. And, um, and that's in the game. And so all the cheating that I do with my regular work where I'm using continuous platforms all the time, not isolating stuff, hitting above the edge and just putting my finger underneath to hold it and support it and everything, putting bending forces on it, doing all kind of crazy crap. Can't do that with notching. With notching, you either get it right or you're gonna probably fail. I wish I could show you how thick that is. It's about is that thick. That's about seven millimeters. It definitely is a risky thing. Oops. And I'm being real haphazard with this because again, my my thought was I would tell you the strategy in a minute, but I'm doing it a different way. That's sort of a classic sea cone sort of, the, the flakes look like a little cone C shape.
I'm taking that one, you know, kind of in the center, but over, there's, I don't really have an ear here. I'll be towards the stem for the first hit. I usually do like two in there. But then you can use the punch in the corners. Just kind of turn it more downward and just gently hit in the corners and you'll take out little side things. But you can also do that with pressure. You know, once you get it broken, then it's easy. And, and since you already got it partially turned, usually you can just go ahead and sometimes just get even a horseshoe nail and reach up in there and just kind of clean the sides up and the corners and square it out. I realize I'm not being graceful, but think in terms of theory. Everything is about the theory. done pretty good on this. I probably ought to just stop before I break it and that way you would feel like I've been a success. But it is just a flake so there's nothing I can do with this. And I'm not going to build a point around it. it. definitely has issues. It would be a very unbalanced point. Corner shot, corner shot. So anyway, the reason I'm just being able to, to just wail on this and do all this crazy crap is because the platform is more or less correct. I'm being more careful than it looks like I'm being as far as the way I position the punch on the platform, get the angle and everything. And as usual, as I preach all the time on flaking, a large part of my force component goes in, not down. Down is not your friend. When you hit down, you do bad things. Force going in has less tendency to do bad things. I'm not saying you want to be running two inch flakes when you're trying to notch, but you know what I'm talking about. Nice flake. So anyway, um, I'm going to stop that and show you another little punch. Now a guy that I have a lot of respect for his work and he's really good sometimes has used little punches like this. And there's an advantage to them. They, they deliver the force rapidly because they're shorter. They don't load up as much. Um, they're good at getting in notches without touching the sides and without I like to start little notches with pressure. A lot of times I'll also take a, uh, like a guide flake or thinning flake. Not nearly as loud. Into the corner, into the corner. Then look, always look, and make sure that the platform is up. <coughs> yeah. 
if the, if you look and the platform did the center line, well, you got an issue and you better fix it. Okay, uh, I'm stopping with the punching. I mean, I'm giving you the thoughts. I'm getting rid of this punch board. A lot of times I'll just punch on leather. You just gotta make sure that it's not too spongy and soft because you need a little bit of resistance for the flake to go. Um, okay, so let's talk about the basic stuff. The reason that I tend to pressure notch is the same reason I'd be pressure flaking if I was a monster and could pressure flake, you know, like percussion. Um, it's because it is more controlled, less shocky, and therefore greater likelihood of success. And if what you want is an end ice, not the bragging rights on how you made it, then you would like to have success. So that's why I use pressure, because I can do it. Okay, some basics. I don't like to start on a knife edge. I like to give it a little grind, preferably with a fine abrader, so it's not a knife edge. Why? Because knife edges crack easy, and I don't want to crack easy. I usually will figure out where I want to take the flake, or the, the notch, and I will mark it. Like when I go to make an end ice, I take and I find the middle of the end ice and I draw a line with a pencil. And I say, okay, how wide, how much room do I have? How wide do I have my stem? Or how wide do I want my stem? Or how wide can it be? I get my line, the center line that I, that I draw where the stem is going to be, and then I look at it. And I adjust all that if I need to. I normally do not finish the front of the end ice until I finish the notching. I'll get it sharp edged and I'll get it close to being the way I want it but it's easier for me to straighten the front up to match the notches than it is for me to deal with the notching all the way up on both of them to match the front. Other people do it different ways. I don't have an artist's eye. So I go inward hard trying to make a guide flake and run a guide flake in. Of course I have no uh, ridges here, so that just flattened out, but anyway, you get the point. Okay, so once I've done that, then that point won't fit in there anymore. So I can either use a horseshoe nail, or any other little thing that is narrow, and go in there and try and get it about an optimal width for what I think is optimal, which usually is two flakes at least, so that it makes it easier not to stall it and makes it safer. Now, I could have done that with this little tool. Uh, I got a bunch of little tools I could have done it with. Hang on, I brought a couple other tools to show you. This is a little commercial notching tool that's got a little screwdriver type copper blade. This is just a little handle I found at a craft shop that I just put a flattened nail in and put a bi bevel on it. There's different kinds of ways you can do that. Um, this is, I don't actually think this is all that great because it's, uh, I would have cut this off shorter because you put horseshoe nails inside. This is just parts from the home improvement store. But the horseshoe nail, because of this copper or this brass thing, not enough of it sticks out to use it very long, but that also is less, I mean, it's sturdier. But you can do that while you're up close. You can do it now, but once you get deep, you can't. Okay, so. Anyway, like maybe too wide and then squared off. Okay, where's my leather? I like flaking on leather because it's not shocky. It, um, it dampens everything and I work on the back of my hand so I don't get bending forces on it. Lately, I've been using this 
what it is it's a flattened 20 penny nail I've got like a little a little U hook shape on it what that does is it gets me the inward force but I can also get the downward force with it so it's just the shape of it helps me get the force I want and also what I what I really probably try to need to do is bend it up even a little bit more because the angle of it upward you could adjust allows you to you know keep your hand like this coming up from underneath and lever into it hard as opposed to being like this and pushing into it hard where you're going to be hitting the sides it's really much better if you can come in underneath what I'll do is like we're going to pretend that's the ear so if that's the ear if I'm going to take my first flake it's going to be on the side away from the ear and I put this little thing right on the uh, just barely grab the platform and push inward hard and, and it goes down a little too so that pops one off but then I've still got this little edge there so then I just push a little bit on that but it doesn't take too much to do that one and look at it see that popped it all the way down to here so that's like half an inch so I'm thinning ahead of myself as I go which is good so this time instead of using the horseshoe nail I'm just going to use this this is sharp but uh, sharp the reason I don't take my main flakes with this is because I want a flat front edge or a rounded slightly front edge on my tool where I take the main flakes because I don't want any side pressure and if it's sharp you know it's like a wedge you got the by bevel and it's like a wedge you got side pressure side pressure blows ears off okay so that's squared out and then I look at it I make sure that it's high enough to where when I flip it it'll be low enough and if it doesn't look stiff enough then when I flip it I can either flick it up a little bit with a horseshoe nail or I can do that number right there here's a hand flaker version of a similar kind of thing but this one isn't bent up so this one's got more downward force to it ran it ahead to there I'm actually going the wrong direction I ought to go I ought to try and turn the corner and go straight I think I'll try that. I'm going to pretend I'm doing an E notch or something. I normally don't do Ohio point types. So. Alright. So we're being careful, and you're like, well, you sure are being awfully careful. Yeah, well, you do it as fast as you want. It don't matter to me. Do it as fast as you think you can get away with doing it. <clears throat> Little things like your horseshoe nails are good for, they're good for cleaning up the sides of your notches if you want to. They're good for trying to turn the corner and stuff. You almost need a little hook on it though, but you since they're narrow, you can come up and sort of push laterally because you got to be careful if you touch if you touch knife edges they break now one thing you can do to try and lessen the odds of that or you could take and make it where the insides of your things are not knife edges if you're gonna do that I would suggest you do it you I would suggest you make sure that you're not gonna have to adjust it before you do it because if you're going to come back later, like if you want to make this notch wider a little bit later, if you file it or do anything or flake it to get rid of the knife edge now, then it'll be hard to do later and you'll be at, at risk. I bent my thing. I'm kind of trying to turn it a little bit.
can't really do that with this because it's not at the right angle and it's not hooked up enough. This is a narrow notch too. Now I got it turned, I really almost need to try and a different tool. If I'm going to try and notch around corners. But that's definitely raised now. If you do decide that you want to do a little bit of abrading or something on the inside of your walls or the edges, it will safeguard you a little bit. Because anything that's Scratched breaks easier and it's thin. You can push real hard when you're taking these flakes as long as the force is going inward a bunch across it. Where you can't, what you can't get away with is do that real hard downward because if you, if I, if I pull, push real hard downward right now. If, if the flake is, if the notch is very deep, if I push real hard downward and it's a strong platform, when that platform lets go and it rebounds and flips up off the pad from the release of energy, like as not, just the mass of the ear will make it flip off, make it break off. It just won't take it. I've kept this relatively narrow, but I will tell you that the narrower it is, the more dangerous it is, and the le least likely you are to have success. One, one phenomenon that happens with notching that doesn't happen with other type of flaking is sometimes, especially when you got a knife edge right beside on the, on the edge of the notch right here, if you have a knife edge right beside your platform on the edge, sometimes, especially on a narrow notch, you get much force in there. The, the flake, instead of just making the nice little circle cone thing, will kind of wrap around that ear and just go crazy and take it off. Hey, where... Where's my little punch? Maybe I can try and go around this corner. Actually, I threw it in this other thing, so I don't even know where it is now. There it is. But it needs to be filed because it got a little shoulder on it that's sloping now. Try and get it back more flat. I wonder if this will work. I don't know, probably ruin it. Took a flag. Trying to think what I haven't told you. I'm gonna go all day with this. How long has it been? 29 minutes. Am I out of my mind? I probably all left 20 minutes ago to go get food, pizza. Okay, well. Was that everything I know about notching?
Pushing the right direction really is the big part. But everything has to be right to get your force going, you know, get that angle inward partially, get some support, don't be letting it bounce too much, vibrate too much, don't touch the sides, don't notch into something so thick you know you can't handle it, um, keep your platforms low, keep your platforms strong enough, abraded enough slightly to keep them from failing. And you'll probably be okay. Um, bye for now. Freeze cracked.